if you're doing something more mission critical, use the GPS in conjunction with regular old magnetic compasses, other distance measuring equipment, terrain association and common sense. A lot of terrain association is common sense. No, keep, don't just drive blindly down the road until you see the next turn off or the next road sign, but keep track of things. Might take more people, but say a track commander is supposed to be doing keeping track of the position while the driver drives. GPS will let you down if you have poor land nav skills or getting poor results with other methods. And I will also say GPS will let you down if you assume that it's going to fix it's going to fix everything for you. I have had people leave a land nav class of mine come back out in the field two weeks later and get their car stuck in a creek because they followed the GPS instructions to go down a gravel road, which clearly is a bit dicey for a M35 two and a half ton truck. And they put their Pontiac into it or whatever they were driving. You have to have the right mindset and use your tools the right way, whether it's a car nav, your phone, a real live outdoorsy handheld unit, or even just using compass and pace beats. So, let's use a GPS for a little bit here. Now, things you need in order to use your GPS are you need to understand how to use the unit. One of my first ones is carry spare batteries. Forgot to bring a battery holder out, but you better know how to have spare batteries, know what kind they are, and know how to change it. This is me. I cannot quite do this in the dark because I can't remember which side is up, and although it has little embossed um, symbols on the device, you can't really feel them in the dark. You have to look at it. But it does last about eight hours, so I plan ahead. And I, for example, I changed the batteries before we came up to this uh, demonstration. If it's getting towards dark and I need to be navigating all night, I will use that. Be aware what else, what how the thing works. This thing is flash proof. Uh, you'd you probably call it waterproof, and it's been in creeks. I've dragged it around through the mud and stuff. As you can tell, it's kind of worn out, and some of the buttons are faded away. But part of the waterproofness is definitely having the battery cover on. It has this neat latch and has little rubber seals. Don't change the batteries if you're gonna make the unit on waterproof. Read the manual. They will have a different UI you may not figure out right away. And there's all kinds of things that you can set up. I have set mine up, for example, to have this particular screen in showing these particular bits of information. You can change data fields. You can go here and pick this to be something else entirely. Dozens of options to, for this one screen. I've also set up to have a map and then the stopwatch thing, which also gives me, uh, although it's designed to be a little sporting stopwatch, it gives me uh, distance here. So if I'm going short distance, it's kind of useful. Plus, I use the unit for running, so I actually do use it. And other things that aren't necessarily clear. Uh, for example, these Garmin units, you have this little pointer you walk around with your, with your four-way key. You use the thumb to move the pointer around like this. And the, to reset, but by default, it's a moving map indicator. So to reset it, you simply scroll the page around and now you're back. That's where we are. That's not obvious without reading the manual. That's how you get the satellites. Menu menu gives you this long list of items which I probably would not have found otherwise. And they're all, and many of these do have other silly things. Um, Hunting and fishing, best times, sun and mood data, which can be very useful. I often forget it. But it's, it can be important to know when the sun's going to set. Just so you don't get trapped outside, or for tactical purposes. Well, it's built into some of these units. Regardless, check your manual so you know how everything works. Um, one of the things you're going to have to do is set it up to do what you need it to do. For example, have the right backlighting. Um, make it not beep if you're going to be very, very sneaky. Um, security is an important one. The Rhino is a popular 
type of unit for certain people, but a terrible, terrible, terrible idea for anyone doing anything where a life or limb is involved. And there are bad guys. Because it has a built-in radio, and the radio by default has access to the position of each unit. It transmits it to all others in the area. Not particularly securely. Any rhino can pick up any other rhinos with very minimal effort. You need to know that. That's part of reading the manual and making the right choices. I say for our purposes, set the grid to be something useful. This one has two particular grid locations, but my primary, and the one I see when I'm, say, on the map page, is MGRS. They will always have every system you need. And I'm not going to bother demonstrating it. There are probably a hundred coordinate systems built into this unit. Everything you want. Secondary location I set is lat long because some people insist on using that. Set the datum. Um, if you're working with a map, you need to know what that is. And you're always working with a map, as we've already discussed. The datum will be around here somewhere. I've never actually pulled this map out, so this is how hard it is to find sometimes. Aha. So, spheroid, grid, projection, 1927. So this, WGS-84, is pretty safe of a system to set. My GPS is currently set to that. But if I was operating in this area, I'd have to set it to NAD-27. You need to also know enough about this to know what's going on. NAD-27. That's what it's going to be called, even though it's listed here on this old-timey map as 1927 North American data. You, and yes, you, that isn't just a setting it up at home thing. That is something you set up. You may have to change in the field. You may switch on during a trip and have that problem. Uh, if you have a supplementary system, then enable it. WAS, W-A-A-S, or E-G-N-O-S in Europe, or M-S-A-S in Japan, and there are a bunch of them, are systems that use terrestrial radios to improve the accuracy and adjust for local variations. If you see anything like that, set it up. Before you go on a mission, you're going to need to use desktop software. I'm not going to demonstrate this, I'm just going to leave the unit up here while I talk about it a little bit. <clears throat> you need to get software, and you need to plug it in, you need to make sure your computer, your unit syncs with it, you need to make sure you get maps and you understand them. You need to make sure you have maps of your area. This one is all set up with topographic maps, because that's what I do mostly. It is therefore not as good at traveling on roads, but that's fine. If you're going to do all road travel, you need to get yourself a road map pack. But you notice this one has contour lines as well as the roads. It has creeks and streams and mountaintops and benchmarks and other cute key information. It actually gives you the elevation directly, readable, just like it's a real topo map. Plan your route. If you're doing anything that's not ad hoc and you have time back at back in a building with electricity, you don't just plug in button numbers, don't plug in little waypoints like this on the unit. Instead, set up your route planning on the computer. Whether it's simply free software that came with your Garmin or it's Falcon View, learn how to use it and set up, all, set up your mission parameters the right way. Look at the maps. The digital map is made eh, whenever. The paper map might be even older, but what you need to do, and this is of course much easier on the computer also, is you sit there and you compare the two. Do these contours make sense? Is that road on there? Whatever. It's not just going to be printed. If you're in an AO for long enough, you're going to get local information. You need to make sure that you either that it's printed somewhere, that you know the variation, that you've added extra waypoints or other information, and there are ways to draw your own maps to, or modify them. OPSEC. Don't label your home base, if you have to label it at all in order to get back there, which is plausible. Don't label it with the, the code name of your base or home or anything like that. Try to be a little obscure about stuff. 